GNDCon, Google News Deconstructed, January 10th, 2019. Getting to our headlines here. Trump addresses nation from Oval Office. From Reuters, in Texas border town, skepticism ahead of Trump visit to push wall. From Fortune, how the government shutdown could end without Trump. We're going to get back to that one. From Business Insider, bye-bye, Trump reportedly issued terse farewell as he abruptly left his meeting with the Democrats. Everybody's still upset. And uh, and then there's this little headline here that uh, appears a little bit further down in CNN. Second man found dead in Democratic donor Edward Buck's home identified. We'll probably end up talking about that story at some point. But we're going to go back to this one, because I thought this one was an interesting choice by Google to put this in the top for their headlines. This this is their headline. This is, this is pure speculation. This is not news. This isn't a news item at all. This is pure opinion. And it's very, very flimsy. This, this follows in the... Uh, Bernie can still win category. You remember when, right up to the end, they were trying to figure out ways that Bernie Sanders could still win. This is also Hillary could still win, uh, and but it's more Bernie can win because that that became a meme in and of itself. And this is this is kind of meme worthy here. How the government shutdown could end without Trump from Natasha Bach. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right there, Natasha. And essentially, what she's saying is. Uh, you know, veto override. That's all we need. It's a veto override. Listen, this is the article that she chose to write, that Fortune chose to pay her to write. Is it Fortune? Let me know. Yep, yep, Fortune. Well, that Fortune chose to pay her to write. This is the article. It's a veto override. And uh, she gives you this long thing about exactly what a veto override is, but bloody, 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 we're, we're going to ignore that. <clears throat> To enact such a, a legislation, bloody bloody, all you have to do is have a you know two thirds of both houses, you know both house and senate override the veto, and she just she just she just puts this out there. And the main obstacle in Congress's way now is a, a reversal from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who announced Wednesday that he will not allow a vote on any bill that doesn't have. Trump support. Speaking on the Senate floor, McConnell said the chamber will not waste its time considering a Democratic bill which cannot pass the chamber and which the president will not sign. Of course, McConnell's not going to do that. It is interesting that recently when there were a few Republican leaders, Pence, of obviously, a few others, that were kind of downplaying the Democrat response to, to Trump's uh, Ra- rapid departure from the budget meeting uh, that uh, McConnell wasn't there, but but still, even even that being said, uh, of course the the Republicans aren't going to introduce legislation in the Senate that uh, could uh, possibly pass the Senate and force Trump to veto a bill. Do you know how their donor money would dry up? It's that would be political suicide for. Of course, the Democrats know this, and the Republicans know this, and you know the rank and file, y'all. I don't know how much you know this, but uh, anyway, the Kabuki Theater does what the Kabuki Theater does. It's a, uh, it's an entertaining show, and uh, <laughs> I'll just move on. In the U.S. news, we have uh, well, we're all about Donald Trump still. Everything is Trump, by the way. If you go to Google News. Just after a couple days of this little experiment, it's definitely Donald Trump all day, every day, in every way. So now, Newsom is upset because of Trump's threat to pull FEMA money from the state. If it, uh, I have no idea. I, I don't even know what, why Trump is threatening to pull FEMA money. I, I don't even know if he can. If he can, if it's a serious threat, I'm sure we'll end up seeing more about it. We'll we'll talk more about it. Uh, but this is, these are the top U.S. stories. Also, new War of Words breaks out after. So apparently he did this in a tweet. And so that's that. 
And uh, apparently, he misspelled forest. He spelled it F O R R E S T. That is wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Donald. I thank you. I I love these moments, these twit moments. You know, I wrote a song back in 2010 uh, called the Tweet Tweet Song, and uh, I had a line in that song that, that always comes back to me because it was. It was only somewhat true in 2010, but it is so, so true now. Uh, and, what, and the line was, the president no longer speaks. His policies are in his tweeting. <laughs> there you go. Major policy shift from the Hill. Headline, major policy shift in 280 characters. Trump tweets, no more FEMA money for California. The Daily Beast uh, headline, U.S. fertility rate declines for seventh year running. Okay, okay, that's interesting. The Wall Street Journal, at 30-year low, U.S. birth rate shows striking differences between states. Okay, you, you note that those headlines, okay? We're all cool, right? This is the story, by the way, we're going to end up talking in the U.S. category. And then there's this. <laughs> Daily Mail, fertility rate for white women plummets below the women limit. Needed to maintain the population in every single U.S. state. Is Daily Mail going like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. That's interesting. This is uh, Mary Katatos, health reporter for Daily Mail. This is a health reporter reporting this. The white women. Why women's? Why women's in America? So apparently uh, uh, in 12 states... For black women and up in 29 states for Hispanic women. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's, oh, I see. I'm reading this wrong, folks. Fertility rates for white women were low in every U.S. state in 2017. And then there's the but, which is maybe this should be its own statement rather than a but. But up in 12 states for black women and up in 29 states for Hispanic women. The total fertility rate for the U.S. was 16% below the level of a population. See, there's your headline. That's what most headlines are. But what they managed to find, what they managed to find uh, was this little, uh, little, little, little race uh, element, feed the trolls. Uh, this is feed the trolls uh, news is what this is. This is definitely uh, clicks. You know, I mean, clicks. We we don't really want to be a constructive part of the conversation out there. We just want our clicks. That's that's a click article right there. In the world news. Oh, in the world news. Man, lots of cheerful stuff going on, folks. New York Times tells us U.S.-North Korea summit looks imminent, South Korea leader says. Hey, that's actually a good thing. I started off with doom and gloom, but there's the New York Times. Thanks, buddy. BBC News. Kim Jong-un leaves China with backing for second Trump summit. Daddy says it's okay if I talk to you, Donnie. Cool. And then there's this. This is where we're this is where it gets interesting. World War Three warning. Expert reveals US troops forming strategic encirclement around China. Now this is this is Google News. This is their world. Headlines for Monday, for, excuse me, for, this is this Thursday, Thursday morning, January 10th, 2019. That is the headline. I have the screenshot here. You can see it for yourselves, those of you that watch the video version of this. And that's from express.co.uk. But there's more. Z's meeting with Kim Jong-un and Trump's opportunity for a lesson in leverage from the Washington Examiner. And the Washington Post says of it, South Korean leader calls on Trump, Kim, to move from abstract talk to concrete action. Then we switch over to a few stories, starting with the CNN headline here. With his country in crisis, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro begins another secure term. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, there's, uh, you know, knifings and shootings and whatever's in the streets. And, you know, people are eating their, I was going to say farm animals, but people probably should eat farm animals. I mean, subjectively speaking, but uh, they're eating zoo animals. Or maybe have they gone past the zoo animals? So, yeah, he's, he's begun his, uh, his term. And then, and then there's this story that I'd like to focus on. Turkey says, yeah, let's see if I blow it up there. There we go. You see that right there? Turkey says it will launch Syria attack if U.S. delays troop pullout. That's what we're going to focus on. This is from 
Al Jazeera, Turkey and U.S. remain at loggerheads over the future of Syrian Kurdish forces after Trump's decision to pull out troops. The real key area that we're talking about here is is northern Syria, and it's a region that's come to be called Rojava. And Rojava is uh, it's a, a confederal direct democracy. It's a uh, it's a radical experiment in governance that's uh, going on there, and it's a. Uh, it's largely Kurds, but there's a lot of folks that are part of Rojava that aren't actually Kurds, and uh, you're, you're, you'd you're be pretty welcome there as long as you're willing to to put in the work, and, and the work often means picking up a gun and, and going out, and it's a very, I, I, I highly recommend that you guys, that, that you duck, duck, go Rojava, and uh, you'll find some interesting stuff, and that's the region that we're talking about here. Uh, now, I do want to say before I go on, it should be noted, I don't want to be an alarmist here because Turkey is bellicose in nature. They they issue these dramatic doom or gloom statements all the time. I don't know how many times Turkey has, has pretty much all but threatened to bomb Greece uh, over, over the islands uh, between them. Well, really over the, the gas under the water is what it's really about. Uh, but the article says Turkey will go ahead with an offensive against Syrian Kurdish fighters in Syria if the United States delays the withdrawal of its troops from a, the war-torn country. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kavasoglu said. Kavasoglu. Kavasoglu. What do you say, Kavasoglu? Yeah, there he is. That's what he looks like if you're watching the video version. If you're not watching the video version, he looks like a very angry man with uh, eyes really close together and uh, uh, sparsely, sparsely haired gentleman. Not bald, but sparsely haired, I'm going to say, and a, a mustache and other than that, clean shaven and a uh, nice little suit and tie there. And just, just looks like a angry... Uh, Eyes too close, man. Angry eyes too close, man. That's what he looks like. It's angry eyes too close, man. And angry eyes cl too close, man, which is better than saying Kavasoglu. Kavasoglu. Actually, it's pretty cool sounding. I like it. Kavasoglu. I take it back. I like your last name. If the withdrawal is put off with ridiculous excuses like Turks are massacring Kurds, which do not reflect the reality, we will implement this decision, he told NTV Channel on Thursday. We are determined on the field and at the table. We will decide on its timing, and we will not receive permission from anyone. So he's basically saying when when it's time for us to do our offensive against uh, Rajava, if U.S. troops are there, well, I guess we're just going to have to fight them. That's what they're saying. It's not going to happen. Now, they'll send in their their ISIS and their whatever. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, the stuff that gets on there. ISIS have, has received support, support from almost everyone in the region, including the U.S., including the Turks, including the Israelis, and, you know, every, everyone for various reasons has supported ISIS because ISIS has been everybody's con convenient chaos maker. That's pretty much, that's pretty much why they get funding. So, so yeah, Turkey will, will, will just send in more, more of that stuff. They're, they're not going to directly confront the U.S. because, because I know Russia's looking at it like that and them and Russia's saying, yeah, you ain't doing that. Uh, uh, we we don't need to be drawn into this. No, no, we we, it ain't it ain't time. It ain't time for this. So, so I'm I'm not too worried about this. But uh, it is worth noting the the bellicosity of the Turks, and I'm sure that the the anti-Trumpers uh, will. Uh, and by the anti-Trumpers, I mean the people who uh, they're just blindly resistant to anything uh, that Donald Trump is. Yeah, you know, it's uh, the the Donald Trump says the sun rises in the east and they'll they'll come uh, come up with some equivocation to show he's lying. Uh, and, and you know and I'm not talking about people who oppose Trump. There's plenty of people who oppose Trump who are not anti-Trumpers, but <laughs> anti-Trumpers, you know who you are. You you've just cut off all critical thought and you're just yeah. Uh anyway, don't worry about this folks. But it is fun. It's 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 fun to watch the bellicosity of the Turks. In business news, we have uh, two uh, auto giants affecting jobs in Europe, and one of them it's non. I don't know exactly where, and I didn't look too deeply into this article because why? Why should I? You know, 
Okay. Ford is taking jobs from Europeans. Ford is taking jobs from hardworking Europeans and shipping them out to America. I mean, ask yourselves, Merkel, are you going to put up with this? Anyway, the other one is uh, Jaguar. Jaguar apparently is cutting jobs in the UK because of China and diesel. And it's a 4,500 uh, UK job. So, so basically the British... They have to be looking at China and be like, yo, China, why are you screwing your economy up? You know what? China is willfully sabotaging its economy just so they can, that, that they can uh, cost British jobs. That's what's going on here. They know that Britain is out of a hard, whole hard time with the whole Brexit thing, and uh, China's doing this to them. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. It's really sad. In technology, Google News wants you to know that uh, the most important thing is Samsung's uh, folding phone. I can assure you Samsung's folding phone is not the most important thing going on in the world today, but uh, Google will tell you that it is. But, uh, yeah, it's a folding smartphone, folks. There you go. And entertainment. Now, in entertainment news, this is actually might be the most interesting story of all the stories that we're talking about here today. We have uh, a penis and... Uh, I guess racism, Muslim racism, racism against Muslims, because Muslims are a race, something. Um, all surrounding, uh, surrounding the movie Green Book. One of them is about the screenwriter, and one of them is about the director. Green Book screenwriters. Resurfaced anti-Muslim tweet sparks backlash. backlash. That's from the Huffington Post. USA Today says Green Book director apologizes for penis prank, just as Oscar voting begins. NBC News says resurfaced tweet from Green Book writer on debunked claim about 911 draws backlash. IndieWire. Green Book writer Nick Vallelonga supported Trump's claim that New Jersey Muslims cheered 911. Yeah. Green Book writer. Oh, this, this article is written by Zach Scharf. Green Book writer and producer Nick Vallelonga has been a staple on the awards circuit this Oscar season. Okay, whatever. He, he just got some Golden Globes. He, he won a bunch of Golden Globes and Critics' Choice Awards. But now it's been revealed. It's been revealed that in 2015, Vallelonga tweeted something. Yes, tweeted something. Yeah. Because Donald Trump... Uh, he tweeted uh, just after the about the about the thousand. It was about the nine one one thing. Trump tweeted, "I watched when the world. I watched when the World Trade Center came tumbling down, and I watched in New Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering as that building was coming down. Thousands of people were cheering." Valalonga replied to Chan, to Trump, "One hundred percent correct." Muslims in Jersey City cheering when tower went down. I saw it as you did, possibly on local CBS News. Yeah, there's a lot of people that actually did see, quote unquote, it. And they really did believe that it was what it was. And I mean, I actually believed uh, that it was for a hot minute. Not, not, not terribly long, because I think it wasn't too terribly long before it became kind of apparent that it was kind of bogus but uh but but back then uh, around in 2015 i mean i'd been through some stuff but uh you know these last three years yeah i i mean my guard as far as the fake newseries is concerned my guard is so much higher now than it ever was in 2015 i look for it i'm skeptical of everything i see so i'd be much less likely to fall for it uh back in uh and even in 2015, uh, but definitely back in 2001. So he he did this in 2015, and when asked for a comment, he says, "Dude, uh, I mean, the, the the thing is, the Twitter account had even been deleted." <clears throat> oh, I think the guy knew. Listen, man, I said some stuff. I'm just gonna delete this Twitter account, man. And and now we're like, we're going to criticize. We're gonna. We're going to crucify and try to destroy people's careers and lives because they had a lapse in judgment. I would say they had a lapse in judgment. And also we're going to call it racism, not an understanding that Muslims aren't a race. I mean, I understand how actually it can be kind of racism, 
But uh, you don't really know that. Like if the person is thinking, when they're thinking Muslims and they're thinking like a certain people that look a certain way, you actually could argue maybe that is like actual racism. But I don't know that. I don't know the intent of them saying Muslims in Jersey City. I don't know. I'd have to know more. I don't. I, I definitely would have to know more. But nobody else does. You don't have to know more in this time. So Green Book director apologizes for penis prank just as Oscar voting begins. That's right. Director Peter Farrelly. Mm. Dude, not cool, dude. Not cool. That's got to be something horrible. This is, a, well, it is a penis prank, so it's got to be horrible. Angela Weiss is writing this. Uh, just three days after winning... Three Golden Globes as Hollywood begins choosing the Oscar nominees. The acclaimed film became mired on a co- Well, I don't care about this all-screen messes. Let's just get to the to the, to the meat of the story, so to speak. <laughs> Stories in Newsweek and The Observer from 1998 Chronicle director Peter Farley's old habit of flashing his penis as a prank have resurfaced courtesy of the cut. The Observer story says Peter admits that after doing this trick easily 500 times, he is now in a state of forced early retirement. Well, I mean, listen, folks, I just want to let you know that when you have a, a group of friends, uh, and I'm, I mean, I don't know the full story. I'm, I mean, it, it, and if it's in this context, I mean, if he's doing it to people like at random that are not in on the, on the crudosity. You can have a group of friends, and I don't know if this is necessarily a guy thing. I don't know if women have similar kind of stuff. And I, I mean, certainly I, 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 it, I've experienced times when women have been part of this kind of crew, if you will, this, this group where, where we've established the standard with one another, a rudeness standard where, yeah, we're going to really like test the bounds of decency with one another. We're going to be like totally obnoxious, rude, and and penis flashing is definitely not off of the equation in that context. Even if if you know you might occasionally have uh, women in the group, and you know I'm I'm not I'm I'm in my experience the type of it's not often that women are in that group. It's not that they're not welcome. It's just generally speaking, I have found in my experience. Women don't tend to be into the crudosity as much as men do. And that might be a reflection of our sociocultural conditioning more than a biological reflection. Anyway, that's another tangent. So, fairly, let's see, he issued a statement to USA Today Wednesday apologizing for his behavior. True, I was an idiot. I did this decades ago when I thought I was being funny. And the truth is, I'm embarrassed, and it makes me cringe now. Dude, I'd be like, you know what I would have said? I would have said, dude, I did stuff, man. I mean, um, the, the only thing that he would really have to apologize for, again, is if he did this with somebody outside of his crew. And again, even if he did it with a woman, you know, folks, don't be, don't be sexist and assume that women aren't capable of being part of your crude crew, because they are. Because I've met women, man, that... Uh, you know, uh, they, they, they can roll and, uh, they, yeah, you, you can easily, but in this culture, in this climate, you know, you don't, you don't look at context. You don't try to figure that out. And I don't know if women were involved in this or not. Most likely they're not. And I'll just say, just because of our sociocultural reality, it's not likely that women would be part of that type of exchange, but, but, but it, but it does and can happen. And, and when they are part of that exchange, man, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sleep. Don't, don't, don't go to a party and uh, fall asleep on their couch. I'm just saying, don't do that because, uh, bad things happen. And, uh, yeah. Usually involving permanent markers, perma markers, you know, laundry, laundry markers. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. More on this. This is this is actually where they get the story from. So the cut actually gets to what Peter Farrelly actually did. So it's from apparently uh, 
some article from a Newsweek story back in 1998. The Farrelly brothers have something they want to show you, and it isn't their new movie. In fact, it's something you'd probably rather not see at all. Something of Peter's. Something anatomical in nature. Unless they say the Farrelly brothers, but it's really just about Peter. The Farrelly's, or maybe it is about both of them, have concocted a variety of clever ploys designed to get you to look at it. Bobby, 40, is the straight man, all innocent as he lays the trap. Then Peter, lankier, edgier, and a year older, delivers the coup de grace. You may think you're going to be examining a mysterious watch on Peter's torso or checking out his new watch pen. The reality is a good deal more shocking. But as Cameron D. just puts it, when a director shows you his penis the first time you meet him, you've got to recognize the creative genius. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know that... <laughs> Again, you have to see the context, and it's like context is so important. The people that you're interacting with, the kind of relationships that you have with them. I could definitely see myself uh, pulling a penis joke on, on, on some of my closest friends that I've had throughout the years, and a couple of them could have even been female. I mean, I didn't actually do it with a female in my case. It didn't happen, but, but I could definitely have seen how that could have happened with some of the females in my lives, and some of those females have done, well, they've pulled their own pranks, I'll just say, that uh, because of the context wasn't sexual harassment. It was uh, a crude, rude, oh, you got me. Okay, okay, I remember that. I remember that. All right, all right, you got me. And people, you know, we, we like testing the bounds of decency, and usually we like to do so with, uh, you know, people that we, we, we love and trust, basically. Sports! Indiana Pacers beat the Boston. Oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, you Pacers fans. Pacers lose to the Celtics. They lose 108 to 135. Celtics win. And this is bad news for me because I am a Philly fan. Sixers lose in a, in a, in, oh, just awful. It was a road vic It was a road game. So maybe they were a little tired. I don't know. They lost to the Wizards 123 to 106. The Bucks down the Rockets. <laughs> That's an interesting score. 116 to 109. Rockets still haven't found their stride. Mavericks uh, beat the Suns 104 to 94. Pistons lose to the Lakers 113 to 100. In men's basketball, the Houston Cougars, 17th ranked Cougars, get upended by the Temple Owls. That's a Philly team, so go Owls. And the Auburn Tigers, 11th ranked Auburn Tigers, are upset by the Ole Miss Rebels 82. To 67, Virginia Tech Hokies down. Ooh, they just edged Georgia Tech, 52 to 49, and the Hurricanes lose to the Seminoles, 68 to 62. In the NHL, the Nashville Predators beat the Chicago Blackhawks four to three. Uh, Avalanche lose to the Flames five to three. The Senators down the Ducks two to one. In sports headlines, the A's expect Kyler Murray to declare for 2019 NFL Draft, ESPN's reporting. Also from ESPN, Adam Gase expected to be hired as New York Jets head coach. New Yahoo Sports report, Mike McCarthy only wants to coach the Jets next season. I guess he wants to go from green to green. ESPN, daughter of Brandon Mebane of Los Angeles Char Chargers, dies after seven weeks. So. Uh, ESPN, Boston Celtics, Kyrie Irving team meeting sparked turnaround. Andrew Wiggins of Minnesota Timberwolves says he meant no respect with gay remark. That's from ESPN. Yahoo Sports Warriors ask NBA to investigate Cavs signing release of Patrick McCall. And finally, Twitter will live stream some NBA game footage for the first time. That's cool. I'm interested in that. And that's it, folks. That is Google News Deconstructed GNDCon for January 10th, 2019.